Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to Blast from the Past. For those of you that's been around the channel forever since the dawn of time, uh, you may be somewhat familiar with this or people that know me kind of from around here or from before the YouTube days. Uh, this is the truck known as Old Yellow. If you look there, it's Diesel High Rod Association member number three. I mean, this was the, the third vehicle in the Diesel High Rod Association. So, as a founding member and the founding tech inspector, this was my daily driver at the time. So, as you can see, it's uh, not been driven in a while. I guess this could fall under one of those resurrection videos, as far as that goes. But, uh, this is where this thing has been living for a while. The uh, block is low in the middle. It won't hold a head gasket, so. That's why it's in here is the engine needs to come out and have the block fixed. And a guy from the machine shop could probably do that. Of course, at the time, I didn't have a machine shop capable of doing that. But I do now, so I guess maybe that's been what it's been waiting on for me to attack. And this thing had twin turbos on it in its last incarnation when it uh, set the fuel-only record. I believe 630 horse, 1300 foot pounds of torque. Fuel only, no correction factor. I believe we're spending, I think Jeremy, AKA Stomp, made a little bit more horsepower than that, but he was running water meth. So this is the fuel only king, as far as I know. Uh, so you can see the five inch downpipe down there that hooked to the HX60 that used to hang there. The S300 and the manifold have been robbed and put on my other truck along with the head stud. So we'll mainly starting this thing up and driving it out of here because it's got nothing holding the head on anymore. But that's what it was. Nothing super fancy. Uh, Got an extra line there because it goes to buy boost reference fuel regulator. Right. Fuel in, fuel out stock. It's the original pump. It was on the truck, but it's got one of my 14 millimeter head and rotors on it that I had made before industrial injection. Got a hold of them and sent them to the Chinese to copy flooded the market, killed off that deal, so. No more of them to be had. But I've still got that one, and it's still wearing. Last time it was parked. That's a intake air temperature sensor. But you can see it's a lot of stock stuff. Had an ARB, the Dana 80 locker in the rear. So I blew the spider gears out of it. Drag racing it. This thing runs better than 106 mile an hour and a quarter mile. Usually about 110 trap speed. ETs all over the place because it won't 60 foot on 235 street tires, two wheel drive, five speed, and uh, no boosted launches. It's got a gate rag in it. Don't really feel like having to walk home, so don't crowd on it too hard. But I've got plans to bring this thing back to life with a new engine that'll be bigger, better, stronger, faster, and go out and do a little thumping maybe. So reset some dyno records in the not terribly distant future, maybe next year sometime. We'll see how this winter goes as far as projects, how much time I get to work on it. Uh, I really need to get the dyno up and running before I fool with this thing too much, but let's take a look at the road that got it to where it is today. 
Alright, let's see if I can remember how this all went. So, there you can see it was 282 horse, 694 torque. Very consistent. It's back in 2002. And you can see the truck was pretty smoky. Best I recall at this point, it had stock exhaust, stock muffler, stock turbo, stock air intake. Uh, only thing it had was my 616 injectors that Columbus Diesel had made for me. I believe this was the next dyno event I went to. You can see the power was up to uh, 355 horse and 792 torque. Again, pretty consistent. You notice this time the uh, RPMs went out past 3600. We'll see. Stock Governor Spring. We went out past 2600. Of course, the throttle linkage has always been maxed out. High idle screws gone, throw it away. Lost that. Don't need it. Don't care. Uh, yeah, this would have been my 61, 62, whatever you want to call it, S300 uh, with a 70 AR housing on uh, at this time. So, four inch exhaust, uh, stock intake. Uh, trying to think if I had the intercooler on it. I think intercooler was on here. Then, uh, this run, uh, you can see we're in the mid four, well, her, about 430 horse, 433, 966 at first hit when it was good and cold. Again, pretty consistent. Didn't rev out past 3300, but just didn't carry it out. Somebody else was driving, I think, probably that day. But the uh, difference between this was after I did my ported cylinder head engine still has stock camshaft or anything else. I know the uh, intercooler would have been on at this point, but I'm pretty sure the difference between this and the other run was the cylinder head. Same turbo. Same setup. Still around 430 horse. RPMs out 3700 still going but you can see the power falls off bad up here we're only looking at uh, probably 310 320 horse maybe there at 3700 and here We've got four eighty six. That was the best best I ever did on a uh, the twelve millimeter pump. And see the torque was over and that's the torque. So the torque was 1,100 foot-pounds, roughly, right here. And again, the peak horse is happening at 28, 
hundred, roughly. Revved on out, thirty-eight hundred or so. We're looking at uh, yeah, just over three fifty horse at that point. This was a Dino Dynamics Dino. It's a like a Mustang. This was a. This was the gold standard Dino DPM's Dino Jet that everybody ran on. And that was at the time considered the gold standard of how much power you made. So I'm assuming I did a bunch of fooling around trying taking intakes off and everything else to try and get over 500 horse and was still right there in that 480 range. So torque slower. The dyno jets torques always lower because there's no load, but still over a thousand foot pounds. So this peak torque 2400. And the difference between these 480 horse runs and the 430 horse runs was I changed it to an 80 AR housing on the turbocharger instead of a 70. But other than that, this would have been uh, my standard configuration, ported cylinder head, uh, my muffled exhaust, five inch and the four inch, uh, factory uh, water jacket intercooler and the manifold, just like you've seen in the video earlier and the way it sits today. And my aeromotive fuel pump would have been on here at this point with the boost referenced fuel pressure regulator and again out past 3800 still still going although you know same deal powers down to 300 horse at 3800 and 400 horse by 3400 but it was over 400 horse from 2200 to 3400 so decent power band for stock camshaft just my cylinder head port job and uh, injectors and exhaust and I'm still running a paper air filter it wasn't the stock air filter but I've always run a paper air filter with a full pipe over into the fender so, More poles, bunches of them, 470s, 480s. Torque all over the place. This was, I ain't messing with timing here. Trying to get that 500, just never did quite do it. But. And then this is with the 14 millimeter pump on. And this is with the KSB off. So I'm just making 480, 1050 by 4200 RPMs. Here we're we're down to two 275 probably. And peak peak horse happens about 2600. So. Then with the KSB on, I made 627. Max the dyno at 1200. If the software wouldn't go over that at that time, so it just capped it. It really wasn't that the curve was flat. Just the software couldn't go anymore. Nowadays that's a joke, but at this point in time, that was uh, good enough to take home uh, Cummins high horsepower at several events. With a VE truck, it would beat the P pumps and the VP 44s because everybody thought they had that much horse, but when they put them on the dyno, it, they didn't actually have it because uh, you got to be able to spool good on a dyno jet to get that kind of a number. Nitrous, of course, obliterates that now, makes spooling not really an issue. But uh, if you're doing a fuel only, which all these were, no, no water meth, no nitrous, no propane, just fuel and air so could do this all day long 
And that's where it was. This was in 05. And uh, I maybe once it was on the dyno after that. But uh, it wasn't a dyno, one of DPM, so I don't count it. But it was over 630 horse. And this is all twin turbos, too. Everything else was uh, single.